Okay, here's another longer video for YouTube. Um, talking about these Yakut knives and uh, the differences that we see, the range of the different types of knives that come out these days. Um, mind you, these are all modern interpretations of what a Yakut knife is supposed to be. Um, here's one of the more better known, older makers, Danila Vyakov. Um, you can see more refined kind of nature of this knife. Um, really nice to hold in the hand. The handle is finished beautifully, really smooth. Um, has that nice little bolster. Um, the blades, pretty simple, that 65G spring steel. Um, nothing super fancy, but it works great. Um, it's really sharp, really easy to hold, really easy to use. This is the mini one that I have. Um, Boris Ustinov. Um, Ustin Borisov. That's who it is. And um, you can see this one has a really nicely finished spine here, rounded. Um, in fact, the whole blade is very nicely finished. And uh, kind of, I think it's convex on both sides actually, which is slightly different. Um, you can see the profile actually looks more like a traditional blade, even though it's got that fuller and it's got the asymmetric nature. Um, Eduard Barisov, here's a different one. Um, again, same 65G steel, and um, I believe this is acid uh, finished for this darker look. And um, you know, a little bit of a different profile. This is a more, uh, hard to focus on it, but a little more typical of a Yakut knife. It's sort of really flat on one side. Um, this one actually has a secondary micro edge as well, I believe. It cuts really nicely. Um, again, on the small side. Um, this is the same maker, these two. This is a bigger version of it that I just got. Handle. You can see how different the two are. The blades are pretty similar. Same kind of finish. Um, Sergei Tarabukin. Uh, this is one of the premier makers. You can see the blade is really nicely finished. It has some really cool features. The handle is oiled really nicely. Just really lovely to hold. Um, he's got, he does these very wide fullers, kind of full size of the blade on one side, so the blade looks completely different on the one side and the other. Um, and uh, still you can see kind of tapers off to the edge, uh, to the point there. So, let's see, this is in contrast to one of the simpler kind of working everyday knives, uh, one of the cheaper ones I have. Um, it has the more modern, although some people will say there's a bit of a debate going on, almost a religious debate in terms of what kind of fuller is really the historical fuller. Is it the sort of the full-sized or the small ones? Is it the one that has the, you know, the hand-forced finish, which is what most people are going for these days for that authentic handmade look um, versus this kind of polished, very simple fuller. Um, but this one does have that what is kind of commonly known as the standard you could blade profile this way you can see from the spine where it's one side is flat and the other side has that convex um, lens and you can see there's some patina going on because this is a this is not a stainless steel unlike this guy which is a d2 russian equivalent uh, very nice steel this one is razor sharp, probably cuts the best of all the knives I have in my collection, which is a lot. Um, very nicely finished. You can see kind of similar to these two actually, um, where you have what looks from the spine like a traditional knife. Um, it does still have a flatter side and a more convex side, but I believe this side also, also has a little bit of a convex um, edge going on actually. And you can see there's a little more going on in the handle here. And there's 
actually two different materials. I'm not sure what this one is. Uh, this is birch burl as usual. Uh, this is a bit of a rounded butt on this knife. Really nice. Um, less typical, I think, these days. So much uh, detail and such a nice finish on it. Uh, a lot of them tend to be a lot simpler. Um, here's one that's really lightweight ridiculously lightweight actually if you held this in your hand you almost can't feel it um, this is one of those guys that definitely will float in water if dropped um, you can see again the smith is using that very wide fuller um, very sharp contrast between the two sides of the blade very simple handle um, and here's the biggest one I haven't been saying any of the names for these guys, have I? Um, Semyon Akhlopkov, uh, Ivan Timofeyev, Artyom Kristoforov. This is, um, who is this guy? Eduard Borisov. Oh, right, that's right. There's two of them, same as this maker. Uh, much bigger, longer knife, the longest one I got. Um, still very light, probably will float in the water. Um, you can see the blade is a little different. It's got that um, that same acid finish, acid wash. Um, it's got a lot of the hand forged details still left on the blade, obviously, but the finish is quite nice. Um, the profile of the blade for this one, a little hard to tell. It's, uh, it kind of looks more of a traditional blade, but it definitely is flat on this side and convex on this side. Um, this is very different from a lot of the uh, non-Yakut makers that make Kut knives these days, who really go for sort of this profile, right, where you have very clear flat side and very clear convex side, not sort of the more normal what you are used to seeing from the back, from the spine. Anyway, um, very long video here just talking about all these types of different types of knives from Yakutia and how they're different and the types of uh, materials that they use and how they differ. Um, I will make more of these. Hope you enjoyed.